Here we have a lovely jungle green N64 console that is about to be RGB modded. Uh, I have a uh, kit here. I've removed the expansion pack already. And there's a, uh, a switch for, um, what is that? Anti, switching the anti-aliasing on, on and off. Something like that. I'll have to look at the, uh, the instructions again, but we'll be installing a switch for that. And then uh, this is the um, RGB kit from uh, ETIM. And uh, this is for a customer that is uh, looking to play this on a PVM monitor. So he's getting a compatible cable, and I'm putting the kit in for him. And we're going to try it out. Um, I'm kind of interested to see how it'll look. Uh, those PVMs are supposed to be the ultimate um, gaming monitor for retro consoles, so we shall see. It's a serial number for those who are interested. Ooh, got a 666 in there. Ooh, evil. Evil console. Uh, CPU 08-1 a little dusty in here not too bad though actually the uh, cartridge connector seems pretty nice um, while I'm in here uh, the guy also asked if I would just uh, um, you know, do the um, region region mod you know cut the cut the tabs out of there so you can put Japanese games in which I will do, of course. So yeah, let me get this disassembled the rest of the way, and we'll go from there. Okay, so this console is using the uh, let's see if you can focus there, the MAV dash NUS um, DAC here. So it needs this little adapter get on there. Uh, the pins are quite small; should be interesting to solder, but. Uh, I'm feeling pretty confident about it. Shouldn't be a problem. Uh, there's a nice. Okay, I'm trying to get, pick this thing up without. Don't want to bend it too much, kind of. That is just pretty tough. Got some double sided tape on there. So, that should hold it in place pretty nicely. You clean everything up with uh, isopropyl alcohol really good before you try to stick it down so make sure you get a good stick okay I've got uh, my little adapter pin adapter soldered on there uh, focus there we go and I put a little piece of captain tape over here um, because the double sided tape is very nice that held it down over there helped me get it lined up the first time and then once I uh, verified I had the pin spacing exactly right uh, it's uh, sp specifically says um, in the installation guide there that you want to uh, make sh absolutely sure that the edge of the adapter is right against the vertical parts of these pins on the on the DAC there so and that did it that did occur quite nicely and once I got it lined up uh, I stuck that piece of captain tape on there to kind of hold it down I put just a couple drops of uh, no clean flux across there and uh, just a just the tiniest tiniest little amount of solder on the tip of the iron I just dragged it along there I used the, uh, the hoof which you wouldn't think it's kind of big right you know for the little little pins like that but uh, worked out pretty good um, so now we go to connecting the ribbon cable to those pins there, which are uh, you got a, I got a mile in between each one of those in comparison. So that should be uh, nice and easy. And then we connect from there to the uh, to the RGB board, which will get mounted on the heatsink. And I got the uh, ribbon cable soldered on there. It is looking pretty good. They are all um, clean, cleanly and solidly attached, and, got a, and they are not uh, not bridging between them at all. Uh, maybe get in there with a little IPA to clean it up a bit. Uh, but that's 
So now everything's connected to the board, and uh, I just need to tin these wires and uh, connect to the RGB board. Okay, so I've got the RGB output board uh, mounted up to the heat sink here, and got the wires uh, soldered up. Uh, this has all been checked with the meter and the. Uh, uh, I'm going to turn the light off on that actually. The old uh, the magnifying glass here. Magnifying lens. So this has been mounted to the heat sink with the double sided tape that uh, the board comes with. And I've used a little bit of capping tape just to kind of secure the wires a bit. And I've uh, to put, in some, put some bends in the ribbon cable so they'll kind of tuck behind the heat sink there. Um, one thing I noticed, and this may not be the case with all of them, but uh, on this one, this edge here is indeed very sharp and I deburred it on both ends because there will be cables going by there. Probably wouldn't be an issue, you know. Um, the insulation should be thick enough where it would never rub through, but just a good precaution. So I, I deburred those edges a little bit. And then we clean the top, the whole top with uh, IPA, of course, before I try to stick anything down. And um, next is going to be uh, mounting up the switch uh, to somewhere on the shell. Oh, my. I just dumped something out of the shell. Um, it's the bottom half. Oh, the top half is even right here. I don't need to jump anything. Look at that. Anyways, so I'm going to find a way to mount this uh, switch in the top half of the console. I need to check the guide again for this. I still am not unsure about what that switch is for. But uh, here's the switch. It's a nice little round, uh, nice little round hole to make in the console instead of something square, which is nice. I'm going to try to sneak it in somewhere on the back. Maybe in this area. Get right around that sticker. Maybe try, hopefully try to avoid the sticker. But we'll just see where it fits. I usually the customer does not too picky. Um, got the uh, cartridge tabs cut out, so it will uh, accept any region games on it. Physically accept it, anyways. And yeah, this is uh, mounted up here. So uh, the switch terminals, are, uh, these three over here, that's where the so, so this this board is set up for that that switch. Uh, you know, I need to check what that is. Uh, it's something to do with anti-aliasing, I believe. And then our uh, uh, we grab some some uh, some wires from the console over there on these four pads. Um, power and ground and, uh, and I think those are those are just uh, extensions of the ones over there we may need to grab uh, connect as well I'll check the guide again but um, uh, basically our output is these wires over here uh, one thing the uh, guide added fairly recently uh, was to ground these uh, this board make a good connection to the to one of the uh, one of these screws, you know, to uh, twist it under there. So you ground the motherboard ground and the board ground together, and then the output goes to the bottom of the, uh, the AV port here. So. All right, there is no good way to mount the switch in the back there, really. So uh, select the spot on the side here, which I think looks looks pretty nice. Um, it won't won't stick out any further than this uh, the little the curvaceousness on the corner there so if you put it in, you know if it's on a shelf or whatever it's still gonna be behind there so that seems like a pretty clean spot for it then it misses the heat sink and everything else right there um, so now I'm on to uh, set this back in here and then we have to hook up our first four of these pins here and it's focus which is blue, green, red, and ground. Um, those connect those directly to uh, the bottom of the AV port here to their respective pins. Um, and then we, as I said, to ground it to the motherboard. And that will pretty much be it. Um, the uh, digital input wires are running on this side, so we're going to run the analog out. Um, yeah, I guess I need to get to there somehow. I'm uh, probably going to run them out this way still, as long as it uh, doesn't make the wires too long. Okay, all done here. Well, 
Maybe we're all done here. Everything's connected. Everything should be done. Is what I should. I meant to say. Um, these are the output going to the video out cable. There, uh, I routed them along the bottom. It's said to, uh, which makes sense since they're digital and audio signals to route them, you know, kind of separately. Uh, so the, the path of least resistance would have been on top of, uh, oops, on top of all this stuff here. Um, and it would would have ended up going right under this cable, which would have probably been fine because the ones on the bottom there are not the. Uh, no, that's not really true. That first one is the first digital signal, the red one. So, see, so yeah, I think I did good by routing it uh, actually under the heat shield. There's enough room under there, um, and the cable makes a makes a 90 degree turn, you know, somewhere somewhere in there, and goes under and hits the hits the correct pins under the. Uh, audio or the AV out connector there. So I'm not going to put any uh, uh, any of the screws back through yet. I did make sure everything's sitting down flat and right, um, but I want to test it before I waste my time putting the screws back in in case I miss, miss something, mess them up, whatever. Um, we did, you see we got the, the motherboard ground here. Or well, not motherboard, but uh, RGB board ground connected to the motherboard ground. And then that was what was the left of the ribbon cable is these there's actually a couple more colors as well black and there. I mean, this isn't quite red but you, know, you got orange orange green and blue for red and green and blue for our, on the RGB output there and the yellow for the ground and then the switch mounted on the side here if that turned out that turned out pretty good and we can turn out to be a good location for it and this is everything in the heat sink. We got these thingy and then uh, I, I haven't actually checked it since everything's on now. But I think the shell will fit very nicely. Back in the top there. Let's see, where is it? Maybe I'll try pushing it down because of the ribbon cable on the floor, but certainly all this stuff will be out of the way. Anyways, um, try to get some video of it actually uh, playing some games.